Two hours to go in the 87th running of the 24 hours of Le Mans. 22 hours complete. Your leader continues to be the hey, Fred, Toyota. We go at the 95 for Francis. So we go at the maximum. We try to catch everything we can because there's still one car in front of us. And we try, but in, in a safer way. So with two hours to go, there's the first team to tell us it's going to be flat out to the finish here at Le Mans. That's the GTE Pro number 91, the car that's in second place. Fred Makaviki, who's trying to chase down Daniel Serra in the AF Corsa number 51, who has led a lot of this, uh, has led all day today, certainly, uh, since this morning, and is trying to hang on. Keating Motorsports, number 85, Ben Keating behind the wheel, getting his minimum drive time done. And he is leading in the AM category by about a minute and 20 seconds over Patrick Lindsay in the Team Project One portion, number 56. Then the JMW Motorsports with Jeff Siegel behind the wheel in the number 84 car. So uh, at the front of the field, Kui Kobayashi is leading Fernando Alonso and the story there has been the seven car has had the measure of its teammate the entire race so far no matter what the eight car has done they've not been able to quite match the speed of the seven car of course the eight car only has to keep the seven in sight to clinch the world drivers championship and to deliver home a second championship for Fernando Alonso and of course the first championship for a Japanese driver ever in the history of world motorsports and for the seven car they would like to claim the victory uh, that would probably be the perfect finish for toyota everybody would get to celebrate trouble for the 81 bmw down at the second chicane on the mulzan car is stationary philip eng at the wheel that car looks to have just run straight on and stopped And in the LMP2 category, just to, uh, there's a replay of him going straight off. Just to uh, wrap up our little recap. It's the uh, winner take all championship battle between Signatech Alpine leading the race and the Jackie Chan number 38 car uh, in second place. Whoever finishes highest will, of course, take the championship honors. Andre Nagao in the number 36 car, and Gabriel Aubrey is in the Jackie Chan number 38. There you see the young Brazilian, Nagrao. BMW guys has, has suffered all day as well, haven't they? Uh, yeah, they've just not featured. Uh, it's a sad sort of low-key exit from the FI World Endurance Championship. Whether or not we'll see an attempt by BMW to get the two US cars in for next season. Whether or not uh, their withdrawal from the WEC will see that uh, accepted or refused uh, remains to be seen. That's 12 months away. For now, it's all about victory in this race, getting home in this race, victories in all sorts of championships. They are the headlines still to come in just around two hours' time. Uh, it's uh, what has been an enthralling, intriguing, at times dramatic uh, 2019. Le Mans 24 hours, the BMW being pushed away here. Um, just looked a bit odd, didn't it, that? See, he seemed to be up to speed, then into the braking zone, then just pulled off. And stopped. Yeah. Though whether or not that's a systems failure, whether or not he knew he was in trouble, we didn't see the lead up to that, just at the point of departure. Uh, Duncan Vincent will throw himself uh, into the lion's den. Full shape, of, shape of area. Full grandstands now. Yeah, absolutely. Different to when I was last here. Just looking at the lap time averages, uh, Sarah in the lead uh, Ferrari, averaging 52.7, has done 17 laps. He's only um, got a minute, you know, uh, over Fred Macko. Yeah. Now, where are we on terms of pit, uh, pit strategy here? Well, Fred's on lap 11. Daniel is on lap 17, if that's correct. I don't quite know how that he's got 17 right. laps. No. Um, but his average, anyway, is 52.7 over those 17 laps, whereas Fred is 51.1, some 1.6 seconds quicker. Uh, remember, I told you earlier, that when the 51 car pitted, the P never came up ah, on, right. on the scoring. So absolutely, and right. then and then it did show the outlap. So we so we saw a, a bit of a glitch on timing a little while yes, ago. Yeah, with they had uh, half the field stops. Yes, indeed. <laughs>
Hey, computers get tired after 24 hours. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, None nonetheless, Fred. Fred is uh, well. He got the the push on, please, from his engineer. He sure did. Uh, and he is pushing on. He's uh, just done a 51.4. Uh, it's about pressure now, isn't it? It yeah. is about whether or not pressure can be exerted. I think we're going to see Patrick Pele on pit lane before we see Daniel Serra. Who, who, what we don't know is who of the GT Pro guys have still got new tires. Well, that's the same with I the other think most of them. I'd have thought that something would be kept in reserve, and, but there's oh. a limited amount of. Uh, so. uh, we've got a commissar down there in the uh, 85 pit. That's never good when they show up in your pit. Bit of blancange going on the uh, front of the... Ah, it's got that damage, hasn't it? Front yeah, left sure corner, uh, Which we yep. saw earlier. It's been there for a few hours, actually. Yeah, there's Philip Enga looking inside the car, trying to uh, figure out... Uh, what the deal is. BMW, so, another car, but uh, BOP wise has, has, yeah. has maybe suffered. They've not seemed to be really on the pace. Best car at the moment, Antonio Felix da Costa in P10. But uh, the Ford, we can see the car's front end being prepped. It may be that the commissar uh, is actually there just making sure that part is going to be fitted as per homologation. That's a good point. Yeah, because especially if they're going to add something to it, yep. but it looks like they're contemplating doing, then... So they're building up a replacement uh -huh. part. Uh, in comes the 36 car from the lead of LMP2. And those fellas don't have wins outfits on. <laughs> a little help from up the pit lane. You'd have thought. They, they've just... They've only got, they haven't got far to go. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and good for them. Like adjoining hotel rooms, isn't it? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. New, new boots. Now there's new tyres for the 36 car. This is yep. about a race win, the biggest race win of the season, a championship win, and a win for Michelin. Their first mm. in nearly a decade here. In... Uh, in comes the number 85 Ford, going to be heading towards Duncan Vincent. And, uh, well, Duncan, I think, could call this one, can't he? Because I think we've got some sl something slightly unusual about to happen. I'm right here. Yes, we've got the front valance, as Jim called it here. I call it a bumper, or whatever you want to call it. It's in hand here, but we've got the Ganassi guys. Yeah, there ain't no bumper there, my friend. About to do the work on the car. This is, this is particularly strange. As the car grows to halt, bang, on go the American Ganassi mechanics to take off the front end. The Keating Motorsport guys with the new bumper will bring it out. But then again, so many men can cross the line. So this is this is something that I've never seen before in motorsport. I'm pretty sure you guys are the same. You said they don't see McLaren doing Ferrari's pit stop in Formula One. But these guys obviously have more practice of doing that or doing the actual job. But so, this is fascinating stuff. The camera right into you guys will be getting great shots. I'm in the Keating Motorsport garage. Here comes the bumper getting pulled off the front of the car now. Here comes a new one, and it's passed to the Ganassi guys, and the Ganassi guys will fit it. That's um, a first for me, guys. Uh, I can have a quick check of the regulations, but my guess is if there is anything uh, that uh, oh, is I, right, I, I don't see that being a problem. They wouldn't do it, surely. They wouldn't do it if there was going to be a problem, because this is the, the, the arm-leading car. They wouldn't jeopardise it, would they? Meanwhile, Patrick Lindsay. Coming to the pits. He's coming to the pits. So Ben Keating is uh, not going to lose the lead here if he can get back out before Patrick Lindsay. And he does. Patrick Lindsay onto pit lane there as the wheels wow. roll on the 85 car. So it's a pit stop apart now. That's what uh -huh. the lead battle okay, is. Okay, guys, I've got Bill Riley here. Um, Bill, that's something very unusual for me. I've never seen another team's car working on a different car. How did that come around? I don't know, the ACO asked us to uh, change the nose and uh, told us that we need to do it right now, so we went ahead and did it. 
Is it okay with the Ganassi guys doing it for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we work so closely together, and they were very familiar with the car, and I, I was worried that if there's anything issues happen, that they would be able to help us out the fastest. So it all works together, and we're all one big team. We all got to get up get to that top step. Absolutely. Well done. Great stuff. It's going well for the Keaton guys, and uh, still happy in here. So there you go. Nose change demanded by the ACO. Well, we'll keep an eye on That's what the, the next... Uh, difference is going to be there. It was a minute and 37 in the pit lane for what will have been a full stop for the KT Motorsport Ford. Uh, it was mandated by race organisers that that change had to happen. So whether or not they felt there was risk, here comes Patrick Lindsay, or rather at least here comes the 56, did not see whether or not there was a driver change on that car. So one minute and 37 seconds for the Ford. How long when the 56 crosses the right line now right line now has been gained and the answer is 12 seconds yeah so the, the i i think personally the ganassi guys uh, a works team is has the resources oh, sure. uh, to practice these kind of things uh, relentlessly in the lead up to this race uh, when i was at aston you would be in the factory and they would be practicing changing the rear wing changing the wheels changing the brakes changing everything uh, even the doors and everything. The privateer teams tend to not have those resources and time and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it was probably just a decision of, look, guys, we've practiced that a hundred times. How many times have we practiced it? Ten. Yeah. Uh, let's. We'll do it. Gathering battles. Uh, gathering battles. Uh, no sign of the gap being closed with the between the two Toyotas. Uh, the AM-class battle is closing, and uh, not least, it's Jörg Bergmeister now who's going to be attacking oh, Ben Keating. Yeah. So it's going to be it's around a minute, the gap in GT AM, with two full-service pit stops having just been completed. The battle, I think, to watch now, though, is for the overall in GT Pro. That's because Fred Mekovicki is hammering down on the, uh, the gap, which I seem to remember is about a minute and 45 mm. seconds, not all that long ago. So Fred Macko taking about two seconds a lap out of this car, the 51A of Corsa, for the lead of the race. Daniel, of course, is, is in his second stint. Yep. Uh, Fred is in his first stint. Fred is about to pit um, in a lap or so. And so, obviously, he might be on his second stint of the tyre for Daniel. So that's maybe the pace reason. It's a minor point at this point, but it might become a major one if things fall that way. The 91 at the moment is not in a championship winning position. To do that, they have to win. They have to win, and the 51 car is another WEC car. So there's a world championship potential possibility of a maybe of a world championship up for grabs. If that was me, I'd be pushing hard. Yeah, they'll need help. Oh, yeah. But if they don't win, they, they no matter, the point. They, they're, yeah, it's, they're, they're done anyway. So remember, 59 seconds, an hour and 47 to go. That is the mountain that the 91 Porsche has got to climb. But Fred Makovicki has got the crampons on and is actually attacking the north face of that and has been for the last stint. Here's my spirit of the race winner right there, the number 97, Aston Martin. Adam behind the wheel of that car now. These guys have been slogging around for 22 hours and 13 minutes. Winner. Thing looks brand new. Winner two years ago. Yeah, exactly. It was a fantastic battle yep. on the last yep. lap. And, uh, you know, more credit to them. That's the 95 car. Seeing highlights of the uh, 95 car going into the uh, barrier. Big hit for Marco Sorensen. Good to hear that he's okay. This is a problem for the 97 car at the Porsche curves. Not the only car to have a problem at exactly yep. that point. That was also the point of exit from the race of the 17. 97 in the garage. Awful moments for the Aston Martin racing team. And that wasn't the only problem they had. They had other problems throughout the afternoon yesterday and evening as we have talked a lot about the, the BOP situation. And those guys have, have not given up. They are still, unfortunately, last place in the class. But that's not what it's about. Now it's about not letting this racetrack beat you. Fred Mekovicki comes to the pits in the number 91 car. Fuel and tires. New tires. Yes, brand new boots, nice shiny Michelins. Remember, only 15 sets allowed uh, for this race. 
Uh, so far, they have been in the pits 22 times. Yep. So they've saved something for a final drive here. Mm -hmm. could, here that, comes, could that prove to be? Here comes the 93 car. He'll go by and go into second place. That's Patrick Pile. Fans in America will recognize that name from the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. They've heard of Fred Makaviki there as well. Fred's kind of the utility man for uh, the Porsche factory as he does the long distance races in the WEC and the, in the IMSA series. Dick Muller brings the 68 car into pit road now as well, this time from fourth. So second, third and fourth in the order in GTE Pro. Well, they've just pitted, oh, sorry, third and fourth have just pitted or or just out to the pits. Patrick Pigley and Daniel Serra will join them on that pit cycle pretty soon. This GTE Pro battle just has the feeling of dramas to come, doesn't it? Yeah, you really feel, I, I, you think there's another shoe to drop. Yeah. You know, we've got an hour and 45 minutes to go. There, there's, there is plenty of time and plenty of room in this race for another shoe to drop and for the, the, the drama level to go way up. Uh, good news for all lovers of bright green and yellow Ligiers, the 34 into Europol car after that issue with it was the gearbox uh, gear shift compressor, wasn't it? Uh, is back out and running. Kuba Shimovsky is uh, the wheel of that car. They are running for a finish. We've got the Aris, which is a, a company that builds limousines for uh, Russian dignitaries. I don't know why we couldn't have the Interpol. The Interpol? Inter <laughs> oh. Oh, that was uh, just, sorry, just uh, caught you and you catch the end of a sequence of 68 car out after a drama free stop. Joey Hand at the wheel now. Yep. Team, team spirit. Great to yep. see. Yep. There's that. There's that moment when you know you've done. You've done your job. You've done your job well. And you get the gratification of of getting the opportunity to thank all your your teammates and the guys who gave you the opportunity to do your job and do your job well with it with a tool and a weapon that uh, was was a pretty effective for the day they aren't in the hunt as much as they want to be but certainly not for lack of effort by everybody involved 48 cars still running in this race with the BMW still stranded I'm afraid latest pit stoppers TDS Racing in and out from third in LMP2. In now comes Paul DiResta from fourth in LMP2 with United Autosports. Bomb Pit Road now the third place car. Vitaly Petrov has a good advantage here over the two rebellions. Three laps to the good as the number 11 car goes through its pit stop paces. That would be the first podium at the moment for SMP Absolutely. Racing. Absolutely. Yeah. They will be overjoyed. There's another record. That I'm not going to say yet. I'm very conscious of the commentator's curse on this one. <laughs> but if they get there, La uh, Lapierre fourth, fourth continuous. Uh, would, that's another good win, one. Yeah. That's another yeah. good one. Absolutely. Who's 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 won this race four times continuous uh, in a single class? Yeah. Uh, very few. I mean, in class, that's a, yeah, that's, nobody, that's a, that's a staggering record. I don't yeah. think anybody has. No, Tom has. Four in a row? No. Uh, it's not four in a row for Nico Lapierre because he went back to Toyota, remember? Oh, that's but right. Every that's single right. year he's entered LMP2, he's won the class. Okay. Ah, okay. 100% record. Yeah. Well, in, in the class. Actually. In the class, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right now he has 100%. Well, one, yes. one man that looks like he might well lose a uh, uh, record at the moment is Thomas Laurent. Uh, astonishingly, two, sta uh, two starts at the moment. He's never finished off the overall podium. Oh, wow. Uh, that's going to be... Kaz Nakajima now. Taking over for Fernando Alonso. Stoffel Van Dorn has taken over the number 11. I'm not saying that out loud. I'm just showing the guys what's... Uh, that looks like a prescription. I can't read it. He's, he's talking about an engine. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I not a person. Uh-huh. I'm saying nothing yep. at the moment. No, yeah, I understand. But, but uh, I, I could say it, could I? Uh, you no. could. I, I, will, I will say this. I will say this. 
I think um, if you do and something happens, he'll never <laughs> yeah. forgive you. <laughs> I think a good friend of American racing is going to be sitting close oh, to the set yes, right that's now. Right. Yeah, that's exactly. all I'm going to say. And I hope you're watching, sir. I'm sure you are. Hi, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> That is what we call a clue. Uh, so the top uh, three of the top four have pitted. The eight, the 11, and the one car. We're waiting for the number seven with the Jose Maria Lopez behind the wheel. Here comes the number 11 car, Stoffel van Dorn. I think he's enjoying his introduction to sport, sports car racing. Uh, great stuff at Spa in his first outing in the most extraordinary weather conditions I've ever seen in an international sports car race. And then breaking records in WEC era, 350.1 kilometers an hour, Jamie, at the uh, test date, the fastest terminal speed we've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, running now, very... I don't think Stoffel's put one foot wrong, has he? You've just said that out loud. <laughs> So he far. doesn't, he obviously You're doesn't learned. believe in it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I don't know, he's going to worry now. now. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how many times, J, uh, Jim Roller, do you think that kind of thing has happened and three minutes later? Oh, how many God. times? Too many times to Absolutely. count. But uh, well, look, whatever. I'll continue now. He's done a fantastic what, job. What, yeah, what, exactly. Happens, in for a penny, in for a pound, yeah. mate. I whatever mean, happens. Look, this is a mark of what you can do with a season of development with a well, car. That's true. And, and let's repeat again that other amazing statistic from qualifying. In the hands of Igor Arudchev, I'm afraid a driver is no longer in the race after the 17 car off heavily at the, uh, at the end of the Porsche curves overnight, uh, putting in a time that bettered any qualifying time ever here by Porsche or Audi. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely amazing. Well, and also you talk about a uh, difference a year makes. The Corvette was out to lunch a year ago. Very competitive here. The uh, Aston Martin, five seconds a lap absolutely. faster here than it was a year ago. I was uh, in my break just before I came on. I was uh, went and had a cup of coffee with uh, Nick Manassian. And I said, what, what's going on? Why are you in, down in P6 and uh, four laps behind? He said, do you know what? Drivers have not made one single mistake. We've yep. not had one single issue. The only thing we have is we lose 10, 10 to seconds. 15 seconds every single pit stop. Because they've got an issue with the uh, restrictor. The, the restrictor on the fuel. fuel so, there was a problem yep. with that. And I'm afraid once you're into this race, you're, you're stuffed. stuffed. You can't yep. change it. Uh, and it's frustrating for him. He said, I'm so frustrated. Every single pit stop, we lose. And he said, because of that, we also then lost out. We slightly lost with each stop, and then we lost with the safety car. Yes. I mean, he said, we've never seemed to make it back. Yeah. It's, there's, there's been tales galore like that where it's not quite gone one car's way or it's repeatedly gone another car's way. One of the cars we saw doing that, by the way, has been the Keating Motorsport car. And all of a sudden, as we get into or towards rather the last 90 minutes of this race is the pendulum going to swing the other way for Keating Motorsports because you've got a tall man, don't call me George, uh, Jörg Bergmeister, chasing down Ben Keating. Well, but Ben does have one bullet left in his gun. Yes, he does. The Dutch flyer. He does indeed. And, and you know everybody has another pit stop to make, so I think Ben will be uh, rolling out. Is Ben going to do the minimum driving time by yes, finishing yes, this he stint? Yes. He's yes, got to go yes. a little further. He's got, to, he's got a full stint now. Right. At least. I think he may have to do a little more than that. But uh, this is going to be one to watch. It's 58 seconds now, the gap. Jeff Siegel, by the way, pits from third in what's been a great run from a very different looking JMW Motorsport squad as well. They will be utterly delighted with that. And three cars now from the AM category on the first page of scoring. Yep. Pit stop, oh, car boy. 85 under investigation. Oh, well, what is that about? What is that about? Oh, boy. Well, Bill Riley seemed very convinced indeed that there was no issue about using staff from the other team to make that repair, to make that change. Was there anything about uh, at any point, did we have too many people over the line? What could it possibly have been? Remember, we heard clearly from Bill, it's the 92 car pits. 
Tom Christensen won three in LMP1 in a row. Didn't Frank Beeler do the same? Possibly. I think a number of the Audi guys may have done the same. Yeah. But uh, that is the Ben Keating car, number 85. We've been talking about it. Oh, boy, this would be a horrible Let's blow. See. Let's wait and see. Might just be a question to be asked and answered. It was an unusual pit stop. Just uh, in case you're joining us uh, just late here, what uh, we're talking about here is Ben Keating brought in the number 85 Ford from the lead in GTM with a pre assembled nose section of the car having been looked very closely at by the uh, technical delegates to the race and he was brought and he brought that car in at their demand they were told to come and make the yeah, change yeah but and, and do it now yeah but the but the change was made not by the Keating Motorsport uh, crew but by members of the Ganassi racing crew who clearly were more practiced at changing that particular part now we don't know that that's the issue but that was certainly a visibly very unusual part of that stop uh, Duncan Vincent pit lane specifically asked the question of Bill Riley's team managing the Keating Motorsport car. Bill was very clear that that was not an issue. Yeah, and it would seem to me, I've known Bill Riley almost my entire life in this sport. You have my sympathies. <laughs> and that is a question he would have asked. I'm sure. The official that was there before he allowed that to happen. So Jogberg Meister is continuing to try to harass and chase down uh, the Ford, but is there going to be another aspect to this? It's 57 seconds now is the gap. We've got 93 minutes to go in the 24 hours of Le Mans for 2019, the 87th running of this race and the final race in the super season of the FIWC, this transition year to a season which will, from here on in, finish here at Le Mans. Let's head down to the pits. Yeah, thank you very much. We catch up with Fernando Alonso. Fernando, we talked yesterday and you said you were looking forward to getting back into that rhythm of the night, which I keep talking about. How was the night, but also how was the door issues throughout the night? Yeah, I think that was uh, that was bad for us, unfortunately. I think we were uh, quick at night. Those was our uh, sweet time. We knew that, and uh, uh, we found that the car was so slow for whatever reason. So we keep changing front end, rear end, just to find the reason of why the, the car was so draggy. Until in the first stop, we found that the door was uh, half open. So it was not the front end, it was not the rear end, it was the door. But uh, yeah, we lost that uh, that couple of hours. But still, car seven is still. Uh, quicker than everyone else on track so you know I'm happy for them if they can experience the win as we did last year and uh, we are happy if we can uh, secure the world championship so yeah when I want to have to go and hopefully everything keeps the same yes how, how is the track condition is there a lot of debris out there because there's, there's been a lot of things happening yes yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, rough at the moment you know there are uh, uh, marbles everywhere there are floppies everywhere so yeah you need to, to have uh, an eye on everything but uh, at the same time there is much less traffic now I think a couple of cars retired, so you know you can you can find more clear laps. So it should be okay until the end. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. One other thing to keep an eye on, guys. We saw a little while ago some pictures of Patrick Dempsey watching the number 77 car pit stop and kind of being uh, you know a little bit less than less than pleased. Well, that's because that number 77 car, which is the uh, kind of the champion elect drivers are now trying to hunt down the JMW Motorsports number 84 for the final podium position. So they have now gotten on the same lap. They're only two minutes behind. And with 90 minutes to go, that is certainly uh, something that uh, could become something to watch as we get near the finish of this race. Well, uh, you've got uh, Matt Campbell on the charge down trouble. That's a, a, re a left rear puncture for the jumbo car, the 29 car. Patrick Dempsey was timing that pit stop with his Tag Heuer Monaco. That was a, a long time ago. That was, yeah, that was the earlier Ito issue. Van der Garde having his uh, problem earlier. And it's a big hit, now, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a big hit. A lot and of now damage. more problems for the car. Car 29 slow between the two chicanes. You saw that puncture. That was, yeah, that was a uh, big damage to the front of the car. 
problem for the rear uh, tow hook, which uh, was apparently not available to the recovery crew as well. The team told with Nick De Vries at the wheel of the 29 to get that one fixed as well. Um, with thanks to Michael Zolivari, one of the uh, guys who looks after the very successful and very active WC Reddit group. Uh, he reminds me in my tiredness this morning that uh, Tom Christensen, Frank Biller and, and the Manuel Piro run three times in a row from uh, ah. 2000, 2002. That's exactly So, good morning, Michael, down in good Australia. Right, we uh, see you at the Asian Le Mans series down at the Bend in January. He lays in, second in class, and I think... This is the second place car. Gabriel Aubry in the LMP2 car. He comes out. Pile will uh, swap over. Bamba, in, yep. in he goes. Recognize that Kiwi. Yeah, he'll be in until the end now, I would imagine. Moment. Oh, yeah, he'll be. He'll take it to the checkered flag. One hour 29, 54 minutes for a stint, isn't it, roughly? Something like that. So, so they've got a short fill, yeah. which is going to help them. Uh, Daniel Serra is on lap 12. He's not far away from seeing Daniel Serra down pit lane now as well. And that this will then start to wind out into a real world countdown. Mm -hmm. In the Jackie Chan car, Gabriel Aubry has turned that car over to uh, Tung. Fred Makovicki is still pumping in the lap times and pushing very hard, 51.3 average in the last stint and 51.4 average currently. Comparison with uh, Daniel in the AF Corsa car, uh, he's over a second quicker still. So he is slowly but surely catching him up. Uh, next stop for Duncan Vincent might well be down at BMW because I've just spotted the 82 car on pit lane and they've only been out for two laps. So that car is going to go back into the garage, we hear from, from Duncan. Johnny on the spot. Or Duncan on the spot in this case. Yes, he crowed it was uh, just two laps out, so it's falling to pieces, I'm afraid, for BMW in the latter part of this race. The 81 car has not moved from the place it was pushed to a place of safety at uh, second chicane a little while ago to the 29 car coming back slowly with that left rear puncture. That has got. Uh, Gide van der Gaard at the wheel of the car. Yes, that's twice for him. Still still Mike Conway with the fastest lap every time Absolutely. I come in. I'm amazed <laughs> to see that. And you know what? That's a clear indication that Toyota have cruised. Uh, there's a clear indication they've been able to manage this race. I mean, yeah. with the exception of the uh, confusion about what was costing the speed. And we heard directly for, uh, via Duncan from Fernando Alonso. Um, I think he's just got to the stage where it's a bit of a case arm, case arm moment, isn't it? Well, uh, they've got the world championship. Yeah, he'd have loved to have come back, uh, finished this campaign with two Le Mans wins. He's clearly a student of motorsport history, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty historic achievement. But unless something goes awry for the number seven car, what am I saying? Um, then you know that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Getting that look from Jamie Campbell Walter, he learns fast in this game. <laughs> You, you just wait, something could happen. Oh, it just it always does. It always does. The most remarkable things happen at the end of endurance races. Right, I've just got to quickly say thank you for the, my messages from my two daughters as well. Ah, Lucy and Poppy. Go. <laughs> good for you. He was, he was in tears here, girls. In yes. tears. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Crying That's away. Neat. Good for you. <laughs> good for you. I did that to poor Paul Trustwell once. His son quietly sent me an email and said, would you please read this to my dad on the air? <laughs> and I said, Paul, we've got an email from an interested viewer. And I read it, and, and, and poor Paul just fell apart. Guido van der Gaard still making his way back with his puncher. Um, he's sensibly going slowly so that he doesn't do any bodywork damage. And it was starting uh, to bounce there yeah. for a little bit when he went through our nage. All right, let's check in in BMW with uh, Duncan Vincent. Yeah, and approach is very loud down here. Can you please tell us what's first of all gone wrong with the 81 and why is the 82 now in the garage? Uh, the 81 stopped on track because of an uh, electrical issue, but uh, the driver's still with the car, so we're trying to see if we can get it uh, going again. 
The 82 is a different thing. It's got some issue on the rear suspension, which uh, started rubbing on a rim. So uh, we're uh, investigating now, and hopefully we can get it out again. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, catalogue of woes, I'm afraid, for the MHGTEs. They will go out from their WC campaign with a bit of a whimper rather than a roar. Set it up for Orba Corsa. On pit road, the 51 car, the gentleman, makes its uh, stop. It's a neat and tidy minute and five seconds on pit road. Fred Makovicki will come through to complete his lap. We'll see a real world gap at that point. Meantime, Jörg Bergmeister is catching Ben Keating. 51 and a half seconds now, and regularly taking a second to two seconds out per lap. So 29 car on pit road heading to the waiting arms of the racing team Netherlands, guys. So it's going to be... <laughs> there you see the car coming to a stop. That, that carcass is well used. Yep. <laughs> Replay of the uh, of the tire. Those hard sidewalls. We were talking about earlier, very stiff sidewalls. That's what the car basically came back on. Yeah. Pierre Guidi has been uh, entrusted in bringing this Ferrari home with an hour and 23 minutes to go. Fred Macko still pushing very hard. Old Bamba in the Porsche. That's your top three. And the Fords are all there, waiting yeah, to pounce. Just, yeah, just waiting for something to happen in front of them. They're, they're keeping the pressure on. They're, they're going as fast as they can possibly go. If something happens, one of them's going to be in for a shot with the podium. If we have a calamity, they're all going to be right there, waiting to pounce. We're going to be playing count back pretty soon with the cars that are still in with an opportunity of making an impact in performance terms. That is going to include GTM for all podium positions. I'm sure of that. It's uh, something under 20 laps that uh, the Team Project One squad are going to have to make the impact that they require to overhaul so, the Ford. So that's going to have to be more than two seconds a it's lap. It's going to be more than two seconds a lap, but we're still waiting to find out whether or not there's going to be dramas of the race control variety mm -hmm. on the back of that pit stop. The only thing I'd say at this point is if there is going to be, let's have it now. Yes, yes. thank you. Let, give them the opportunity to fight back yes. if there is if there is uh, some sort of issue. Or tell us it's no further action. Yes. Berg, yeah, because the suspense is killing me, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> Bergmeister in the second place Porsche, pushing on 357.1 versus Ben Keating, 59.5, some two seconds quicker gap down to 49 seconds now so uh, was just over a minute and it's amazing how quickly it disappears yeah uh, and again we talked both of these cars will have to make a pit stop on the next pit stop Ben Keating will turn over to Jerome Bleekemullen so I mean he may have he may be handing over to Jerome in the middle of a big battle yeah are they uh, are they on a similar sequence can you tell from that fancy computer you got there? Who do you want to know? The uh, 54 and the the 56 rather and the 85. 56 and 85 are on identical lap numbers. Ah, there you go. The average is about three seconds difference. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, here's the reality. A penalty would make the difference. Oh, yeah. yes. Any penalty. Any penalty. A run down pit lane uh, would, would not be the difference, but it would put the pressure on to a very much more remarkable degree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we could get to the stage where they're making a call about the additional time it will take to change the driver. Yes. Fastest lap of the race for Ho Ping Tung in the Jackie Chan DC Racing car, currently P2 in LMP2 with a 329.2. Martin Haven making the point uh, off mic there, and he's absolutely right. Could this be a GTM uh, finish that rivals the dramas in GT Pro yeah. two years ago? Amazing scenes with the, with the whole crowd 
gathered. It is four seconds closer oh. this time from Jörg Bergmeister. He will have his delta. He will know what he's got to oh, achieve. Yeah. He will know. And it's now a matter of can he do it? And how long does Ben have to stay in the car? And let's have a look at that, shall we? Driver time should be available to us on this. If you let me just work through that as we crack on. But he's going to, irregardless, he's going to want to stay in as long as he can uh, to make it so that there's only one final pit stop, right? I mean, yeah, he's he's got to stay in. Uh, he's got to. You don't want to make an extra pit to, stop to just to get him out of the time. car. Right. Uh, and you don't want to make an extra pit stop. So he's got to go into at least 54 minutes to go. Yep. Um, so that uh, Jerome Bleekemonen, who gets in, uh, in. doesn't. we don't see him again. So, uh, And I hope that they've saved a new set of tyres for Jerome. I suspect uh, they have. In, in the last stint. I imagine most of them have. Yeah. And actually, that could be a decider, any of that haven't. Uh, good which point. could also be a possibility. Good point. Thank you, kind sir. Harry Tinknell and uh, Scott Dixon both out the pit lane uh, in the Fords. P4, 5, and 6. In my 55 second gap between the leaders in pro. In my slightly tired state, uh, do we know exactly what Ben has got to do? I, I believe it's he six hours. Six hours? It's what it was for Rold when I was with him in the Aston. Maximum 12 hours for the pros and minimum six hours for the amps. Graham's uh, beavering away on the highly technical laptop. Yeah. Here's Ben Keating coming through the first chicane, getting both his apexes. Super important now for Ben just to remain calm, keep focused, uh, don't miss any breaking points, just nice and stroke it home uh, he's he's not as quick as a, a Bergmeister but if if he just does a nice clean stint and he gives even if he gives uh, Bleeker Molen a 20 second lead that's enough because Jerome hopefully uh, is quick enough to be able to still win this race Ben needs to Ben needs to do another 15 minutes one five minutes if it's six hours and we have an hour and 17 minutes to go so it's a single stint there but, and thereabouts just over. He might have to do a little more to get them within. Yeah. yeah. So this is edgy stuff. It's 43 seconds now. Another five seconds taken out here. And that is not Ben going slower. That no. is Jörg Bergmeister going much, much quicker. 3.58 to become 3.56s and now 3.54.9. Bergmeister has got the call. It's time to push. It's go time. It's go win the race as well as the championship for Team Project 1. I remember at Magni Cor once in 2000 and something, two, I think, I was with Nicholas Springer in the Lister and I got back in the car after the next stint and Lawrence Pierce said to me, if you want to get somewhere in this race, you need to do 34s. And I had qualified on pole with a 34.4. Yep. So I was like, mm, I'm not sure that's actually possible. Anyway, off I went and he said, about half an hour to go, he said, if you continue at this pace, you will win the race. I was a bit shocked to hear that, to be honest. So I, I gave you a thing, and I'm sure York right now has had the, the call of your four, your four to five seconds a lap quicker, 43 seconds behind. You've got a chance of winning them on. Yeah, go get him. And you know what? You suddenly find half a second a yeah, lap. That's strange. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our uh, leader in the LMP2 category. Going to be a driver change. It's the Grau out. I think that's Pierre Thierrier climbing yes, the board. Yes, it is. Pierre Thierrier climbs behind the wheel of the number 36. So it looks like day is done for Nicolas Lapierre as Thierrier will undoubtedly take it the final hour and 15 minutes. So this will be, what, this stop and then maybe a splash more? Uh, it will be. It's around 40 minutes, isn't it? For... Yeah. So it's almost two full stops. Mm. It's one more mm -hmm. almost full stop. Not far off a uh, full fuel stop for the 36 to car to come, but it's been a neat and tidy display again.
Good news for lovers of large BMW sporting coupes as the 82 car is well back onto the apron. So flurry of uh, pit stops underway into Europol are in what will be their penultimate stop. The 66 Ford, the 63 Corvette, all in as well. Decane Engineering on pit lane. The outright speed of these hybrids still, I don't care how many times oh, I watch them, it's, it still impresses me. Still you know, makes me go. Uh, uh, sweeping aside the cynicism about blah, 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 Toto have got no competition. Well, what they have, uh, it's not their fault that they've been left without factory competition. I, it's been a privilege to be able to talk about these cars over the era that we've seen remarkable progress, re absolutely remarkable progress in the technology, in the performance of these cars, the economy, the efficiency, the drivability of them, and the reliability of this package, stunning. The fastest car around the modern Le Mans circuit ever. The Toyota TS 050. There's the 91 car, second place in, L in uh, GTE Pro. Double clutch on that. I got oil or fuel on the screen with the car on the front of me plus the cleaning. I see nothing. I agree. The only problem is that in this moment uh, to finish the race, something luck. Something luck. Okay, no problem. I will be careful. Thank you. Sorry. Even because the last thing is in lap of race things, uh, plus the in lap. Then, okay, you can see some safety car or full full shell or something else. So Fred McAvicki uh, concerned about fuel consumption? Is that what I was, I was able to interpret from He that? was trying to see whether or not there was an alternative somewhere to do with the fuel strategy they've got and was effectively being told for reasons which again escaped me, no. Yeah. <laughs> Politely, no. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yep. here's Sorry, three, but here's, you're on your own. Here's three good reasons why you can't. The traditional gathering of the clans, oh, the that. campsites empty, the bars, relatively empty um, and we will have a massive six-figure crowd along the start finish straight uh, when you've come here as a fan as I have a number of years with my lad good morning or rather good afternoon James who's just been in touch to wish me a happy Father's Day hey hey but uh, it's a special time some some chatter online about maybe the attendance being down this year campsites not quite being full I tell you some of the aerials we've seen the place look pretty full to me it's, it, it's I'm a good no, I'm no expert I'm it's a good a, crowd I doubt I doubt it's a record crowd but there's exciting stuff to come yeah yeah let's uh, go down to the pits uh, United Auto Sports with Paul DeResta is in the top four and uh, let's go to Duncan Vincent <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim Roller. Yes, Zach Brown. First of all, United Autosports inside the top four with the, the 22 car. Things going very well, and we're only hour and a bit away from the end of the race. Yeah, the team's done a great, uh, really good job. Car's been uh, reliable. Uh, a shame about our, our other car because that, uh, that had equal pace, but uh, it sure be nice to get on the podium. But everyone looks pretty strong, so unless someone's got a... Uh, an issue, I think uh, fourth place is probably the best we can do at this point. You've got a big love for sports car racing, haven't you? Because I mean, United are one of the biggest teams here. If you take your road to Lamont and your actual P2 cars, it, you know, is it something that we're going to see it expanding even more? Uh, yeah, possibly. I mean, my uh, Richard Dean, who runs the team, my partner does an outstanding job. I don't know how he how he manages it all. We had uh, two cars here in the 24 and four in the road to Lamont, and then. Uh, in the LMS, a couple cars in P2 and P3, and uh, the Michelin Le Mans Road, uh, Michelin Le Mans Cup. So uh, we're definitely busy. We are thinking about uh, possibly adding one more uh, program to the uh, the fold. So uh, we're moving to a bigger workshop now to accommodate all these race cars we have. Listen, thank you very much. Enjoy the finish. Thank you. You may have seen uh, pop up on your screen while we were talking to Zach Brown, a stop and go penalty for the number 85 car, Ben Keating, at the wheel, for spinning the wheel 
at the end of the pit stop, meaning the rear wheels were moving as the car came down off the off the jacks. Remember, he can't do the driver change that they right. would be able to do. So it's at least two trips down oh. pit lane. Still going to happen for the GT Motorsports crew. Oh, they are going to be absolutely gutted about that. Yeah, he is the least popular person right now uh, in the front of that pit. There's no doubt about that. He'll be making sure they've got details of the... Here we go. Well, that replay started way too late to be able to see the car with the wheels spinning coming down off the jack. So uh, It was a spirited exit. I think that is a very harsh call. Oh, that's... So it was... That was it. It's just spinning the wheels. Yes. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No. These are race cars, for Christ's sake. That's that's that was it. That was the call. Oh, good lord! You saw the two yeah, I saw the two lines black lines. And, um, oh, come on! The regulation is you're not allowed to spin the wheels. And yeah, it's pretty harsh. That's, that's really harsh. I um, mean, well, let's wait and see. It is 37 seconds now because York Bergmeister, with or without the penalty, is already herring into. That gap, he's taken a further 20 seconds out of Ben Keating. A 77 car on pit road. It's not looking like it's going to be the glorious finish of their season. This massive fight back after losing their points mid-season to a technical infringement. Matt Campbell at the moment at the wheel of the car and front end, front uh, valence bumper change to that 77 car. Uh, well, could be close to losing a position here. Does lose a position. Tony Valanda moves up to fourth. It's a good run for the 62 car. Very good run for the 62 car. It's Weather Tech Ferrari with Cooper McNeil We've got on a board as well. Nose to tail battle here, though, for position. Seventh position in uh, GTE Pro. 26th overall between Olivier Pla and Antonio Garcia. This is a car race, right? This is a car race. Okay. So just to kind of run through what we're talking about, and uh, this is a penalty assessed against the Keating Motorsports car, GTM leader for hours and hours and hours. Ben Keating being chased down right now by York Bergmeister. This comes after the 85 was called to pit road uh, to have the nose section of the car changed, something the organisers insisted they did. The car has then left the pits after the, the change was actually done, not by Keating Motorsport Board, but by the Chip Ganassi Racing crew. That's not a problem. What's the problem is they've adjudged uh, that Ben spun the wheels in leaving the pits apron, and that has been assessed a stop-and-go penalty. The really, the most important thing now is that Ben mustn't let that yeah. get in his head. Yep. And Jim's not happy about it. No, because Jim's let it get in his head. <laughs> Yeah, well, could, that, it, it, could it, it, that determine this race? Well, we'll wait and see. Oh, it will definitely determine this. Race. Have we had a penalty you know. uh, like that? Do we we, see we've had we've had penalties in WC races for spinning wheels. Spinning wheels. We have. They don't happen very often. No. But but if they've done it before, then then I'm fine with it. I mean. It... Okay, Duncan just reported to us that it happened to Toyota last year. I don't see how. And you're going to be getting uh, Ben Keating with you any Here moment now, Duncan Vincent. Maybe you can call that uh, that stop. Is this going to be the penalty call? It probably will be. So, uh, as also, we see the number eight. Yeah, because... Toyota down pit road of Kaznakajima. We're not seeing that uh, stop, and, uh, stop and go penalty, I'm afraid. Of course not. There oh, it is. Comes. Corvette's going to get past. And there's there a stop go. and go. Oh, I hope he didn't wheel spin then. Uh, but but uh, worth York Bergmeister. That's what we're looking for. Here he comes. Yeah. Into the Ford chicane now. He comes through his Ford chicane as Ben Keating gets across the blend line, gets it's... the power on. It's going to be a visual gap now. Yeah. And still, both these cars will need to make one further wow. pit stop. Now this let's have a quick look. This is going to be a battle to the finish. Ben Keating needs a further four minutes of driver time. Well, he needs he, this lap. Right, well, but he needs to get to 54 minutes so that yeah. Blinkenmolen can he's make got another fuel stop ten minutes. and take it to the finish. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, uh, Ben could pit, 
It's pretty close to wheel spinning again. Uh, ben could pit the next lap, and he's completed his minimum driving time. But unfortunately, there's an hour and five minutes to go, and the car will only do 54 minutes on the fuel, we think. So uh, he's, he's got to do another 10 minutes or so. Uh, yeah. By which time, I have a feeling that Bergmeister will be past him. Oh, wow. Now, there's, so, uh, there's a couple of uh, bits and pieces here. And with thanks to our colleague Toby Moody, it tells me that uh, Ben Keating wanted to get out of the car earlier. I wanted to keep going could... earlier, but I had to get out you could, because within these complex regulations, yes, there's that six, but you, you have to do no more than four within a six hour period. Ah, right. He didn't want this pressure. Uh, no. <laughs> The gap, 5.8 seconds. Puncture for the seven lead Toyota. Oh boy. It's a slow puncture. And he's in now. He's uh, in the pits now. So he must have been right there. Probably coming through the Porsche curves when they were able to let him know. That was well. it. Drama, drama, drama. They Here comes change, the number 11 car. They from, didn't change tyres. They did change one tyre. They just did one tyre? Yes. Ah. Yeah. yeah, they just did the right front. So, top the fuel up as well for the Toyota. 64 minutes remain of the Le Mans 24 hours for 2019. And the dramas just keep coming. Yeah. And Keating <laughs> um, is responding here. Watch where we go. Front right goes in. Oh, yeah. Splash of fuel. Bye bye. Mm. 11 car in for what will be their penultimate stop. Stoffel van Dorn stays aboard the car under no pressure in performance terms here. It is now just to get to the finish. It's really important now that Ben actually just, it doesn't matter. Leave it to your pro in about right. eight minutes' time to try and win this race. Yes. What, what Just he keep your head do, down. What he mustn't do is throw it away no, now. Absolutely right. No, no errors. No don't errors. Don't side try by too side. Hard. This is a replay from moments ago, the 66 and the 63, the battle for seventh place in GTE Pro. Yeah, Ben Keating, when... Uh, Duncan interviewed him earlier, talked about the fact that he had to get out because you have to have two hours between your stints. Yes. You can't do more than that. So Ben was Ben was well aware uh, of, of what it was going to take. So coming up on, on one hour to go. And uh, I think my time with you is going to be coming to a close. I was honored to bring you the start of the 87th running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and I am just as honored to turn the microphone over to my friend Martin Haven, who will take you all the way to the finish. Car seven, slow on track between the two chicanes. Oh, the leading car. The leading, the leading car. car. It is indeed slow. What has happened here? He's on his outlap as well. He's st stuck in second gear, is he? Something's happened. First, second. He should disappear when the reading is coming from the sensor. Are you sure? Because it can't disappear and I have a lot of fun. Okay, it's your okay. Come back slowly. Come back slowly. Come back slowly. One minute 47 it's behind. It's not going to be enough. I leave you an hour, uh, uh, and look what you've it's done. Not <laughs> you've enough. blown the entire race up. Uh, What's going Jimmy on? Campbell Walter, it's a puncture. Puncture. They have got the low pressure warning on. We could see air in all the tires, but not enough. A set of tires are ready for the number old, seven Toyota. Old tires. 133 oh. is the gap. Oh. Oh dear, oh, oh dear. Bother. Oh, well, it's an overused phrase, but bitter gall again for Toyota. 165 to, uh, trap speed for the seven car. One, a 315 for the number eight car. The As seven, we hit the final hour. The seven car is on its way down to Indianapolis at about 160 kilo kilometers an hour, and he's going to get slower. The eight car is just okay, coming so out. Do you something on the front axle or the rear axle? The front, the front. Okay, so take it easy, take it easy. I come back slowly. 
Wow. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the series. You have, you have less than one bar in the tire. Less than one bar. You have to be slow. You have to be slow. You have to take the tire.